Hey guys, welcome to season 3, episode 13 of Grey's Anatomy. Here we go. No one believes their life will turn out just kind of okay. We all think we're going to be great. And from the day we decide to be surgeons, we are filled with expectation. Expectations of the trails we will blaze. Right. I'm great. Maybe Christina would like some. Christina, would you like some? Oh, let me know for three. You just said there were seconds. You have to feed Christina. She doesn't cook and she will starve to death. I have cereal. You two live together. Someone has to be the first to speak. I am giving it. I thought y'all were doing. If she wants to sit there, she can sit there. Richard's going to name a new chief of surgery. Yes, Burke. But Burke took himself out of the running, which apparently is my fault for being a part of the team. <laughs> yes, you. He asks Burke. I don't think they're going to make it. So you shut your mind. Burke. How can two people be in a relationship and not talk? I'm supposed to be chief. <laughs> George, can I come in? I made you some cookies and brownies and muffins, of course. Why don't you just make family chief? I need to get in. become a sex machine. Oh. <laughs> into a sex machine. I mean, I'm just not gonna be the first one talking. I mean, he has to talk because I'm in the right. Talking first is for losers. I'm winning. And Alex, I don't know what's wrong. Honestly, I see it as the person who talks the other one first well, is the winner. You. But I'm still recovering from the death of my fiance, the demise of my surgical career, the fact that I was At forced to deposit an $8 million dollar check that I was saving for a good cause, even though I haven't found a good cause. But you know. Hey, you have a Chihuahua patient in here that you want us to see. That's right. That's right, I do. <laughs> Why do you want to talk? Why are you smiling like that? You have the length of this elevator ride, Miranda. Use it well. I have two words for you, Chief. Free clinic. What? I want Seattle Grace to open a free clinic. I know, it's a big undertaking, this but... This isn't even surgical. I'll think about it. I can't imagine why you want to take this on. You're a surgeon. Your trust says you've been having some pain and bleeding? She has for weeks. It's not a big deal. I had to drag her in here. On our one day off in the restaurant. Just let the doctors check you out. A lot. Rich and I were born two days apart. It's nice that your country stayed so strong. Cradle the grave, right? Cradle yeah. the grave. <laughs> You just relax this muscle for me. You're gonna feel this back in Julie. Wait. You didn't get to look. I don't have to. You said this was a teaching hospital. You should learn. What is he learning? Don't you know? I'm not pregnant. Am I? No. Excuse me? Can someone please share with the class? I could see the tumor with my naked eye. I could see the tumor. I've never seen a cervical tumor that large. It's just Jilly. Um, in situations like these, she might change her mind. She might want her family. I am her family. She is my family. I'm not contacting her parents. And neither are you. They're helpful and smart and already good at their jobs. So as a going away gift to them, I'm gonna let you hang with Jim while I go do one last rhinoplasty at Seattle Grace. I do like to leave the city just a little prettier than when I came. I don't like this guy. Did he just say he was leaving as in quitting? Dr. Bailey, how was your meeting? Uh, 
or frozen. It would be cheap. Uh, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. There's a project I'm trying to get off the ground. I'd like to open a free clinic. Why? Because I want to, and I could use your support. Ah, see, that kind of project requires logistical, strategic, and administrative components. Something the chief does. Apparently, I'm not cut out for that kind of work. So, you're going to have to take it <laughs> to somebody else. <laughs> you so yeah, salty. I'm sure has a voracious appetite. Or not friends, so please don't talk to me about what George eats. Okay, I was just concerned, and I thought you'd be concerned, but you know what? Forget it. I don't like you. <laughs> Oh, my feelings are hurt. Steve Beck, H32. Ate a couple of protein bars, took a couple of aspirin for this cold I'm fighting. I got another race next month. Oh, God. And Steve, next time you have a cold, you might want to skip the race. Never. <laughs> Shoot, what are you? I'm what here. You? I don't know. Um, but I'm here. Do you want to talk? I know you're sad. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. George, I'm your best friend. I'm trying to help you. Why are you making this about you? It's not about me. It's about me wanting to talk about you needing so much sex your girlfriend's vagina's broken. Keratins. I love keratins. See? Look out! I'm a group. Can we help you? When's her made of the store? Pardon? Our daughter is here somewhere. What's her name? We'll look her up for you. Jillian Miller? Jillian. Wait, what? Is that the... You called her parents? I told you not to. No, I didn't. It's okay, Rach. She meant well. She's good. Be a sing good. We'll have to perform a radical hysterectomy. Surgery? It's okay, Rach. But how does... How did it get this bad? Jilly doesn't want you here, okay? Rachel. But you're having said no, but you coming was a mistake. How did they even know? Let's go home. Get home. I spread me. They're mean. They're unforgiving. Uh huh. The people of Seattle are unforgiving, or Derek and Addison. What's your point? <laughs> what about your contract? I don't know. Rumor has it he's stepping down. The chief? <laughs> Well, who's going to take his place? What do you care? I'm leaving anyway. <laughs> he told me that I would have the foremost neonatal unit west of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. You didn't say anything about being cheap. Why? What do you know? Okay. I know what you know. You're lying. Back to my cover. Uh, this is not good. When you get him in, I'd like to talk about the kissing. Who'd you piss off? Sloan. Oh, nice. Anyone available to assist me on a truncus arteriosus surgery? Yeah? Yes, absolutely. Good. Then first one of you to accurately describe the condition will scrub in. No one else yes? <sighs> That's too bad. It'll probably be years before we see another one like this. Damn. It's a single arterial trunk coming from the ventricles. How could you not know that? How could you not say it? Damn, that's just ridiculous at that point. Just stop. <laughs> well, whether something's right or not, doesn't seem to matter much in this place. <laughs> He's so salty. Well, we want to show that you're significantly dehydrated and your muscles are breaking down a bit. We just want to make sure that the fluids help get everything back to normal before. Your brace is probably a little bit too tight. You've got extreme swelling in both legs. What uh, the? Get towards now. Alright, open a cut down tray. Gloves. Alright, listen, I need you to do everything I do exactly as I do it, alright? Steve? Hold his legs. Alright. Oh, yeah! Jesus, what the fuck? This body is gonna kill him. I need to put in a dialysis catheter on the floor. Let's get this man to an OR now, people. What is wrong with him, though? Oh, yeah, um, I was actually hoping I'd grab lunch with Callie. Have you seen her? No, but... I... I'm gonna page her now. Actually, I'm gonna find Callie. Dude. You 
kissed me, right? You kissed me, and ever since you've been avoiding me. <sighs> Alex. No, you've been avoiding me because you just assume that I want you. You just expect that everyone you look at sideways is pining after you, right? You kissed me back. <laughs> You're my boss. I mean, what'd you expect me to do? Look, Sloan's had me changing bandages all day. And I would way rather be scrubbing in on one of your surgeries. And if you keep avoiding me, then I don't get to scrub in. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Rumor has me headed back to New York. Where'd you hear that? The news travels fast. Actually, it's gonna ask you to scrub in on the peripheral nerve reconstruction. Good news travels fast. Huh? Especially when you have a chatty girlfriend. Anyway, see you at the finish line. Oh, uh, great. Have you done that before? He doesn't, he doesn't talk about his dad. We don't, we don't talk about anything, really. He just... Talking's overrated. Talking's Sending overrated. No, not really. <laughs> George told me. See, he talked about that, you know, a week ago. This keeps up. Burke might be the very last thing we ever talk about. You know, Julie, um, your parents are still here. Yeah. And I'm not the one who called them. You are? Yeah. How did you call them? I called them. After she was baptized, she decided to leave the community. Seems like she she's more she than your should. best friend, if I'm going to be honest with yeah. you. I couldn't just let her go out in the world by herself. So you're shunned too? No. Because I haven't been baptized yet. I want a mom's funeral. I want to be buried in the white dress. And I want everybody to be there. It's your home. But we promised to Rachel. Crow to grave. If she had access to a free clinic, she probably would have had a pap smear every year and wouldn't be dealing with infertility and premature menopause at the tender age of 23. You're 23? That's the Edel Grace? Why? The tumor is invaded through the cervix and into the bladder, which means she's a stage four. <gasps> no, we're not doing this operation today. We've got to close her up. So much more we can do here. Oh, that's yep. That's gonna piss him off. Too soon. What? Mark Sloan. You told him Chief was stepping down, that I wanted the job. I didn't know that was a secret. He was leaving, Meredith. He was leaving town. Okay, and now he's not. No, he's not. Getting the reason to stay. Derek! The commitment I'm asking for is only a few hours a week. I'm sorry, but I can't do with any more distractions right now. You cut me out of surgery after surgery made me feel like I was the one who couldn't do her job. You made me doubt myself. You owe me this. You do. You need someone who can provide leadership, direction to the project. Over the next few months, Chile's gonna go through a lot. Radiation, chemo, be everything, it's too hard. Chile has parents who love her. They, they love her and they're here and she wants to go home. No, she doesn't. She called them, not me. Cradle to grave, she's... Chile, I love her. It's possible that the very best thing that you can do for her if you love her is let her go. Damn. What are you doing here? We are waiting to see the chief. You too? Yes, Derek. Both of us. You're unbelievable. The fact that he hasn't tapped either one of you yet means that he... He's not oh, God. Him. What? He's gonna pick Bailey. Pick Bailey. Pick Please pick Bailey. Chief! But I have an appointment! I have an appointment! So do I. Oh, you want to be chief? Just because you want to be chief. All of you. All of you. I have had a perfect day. I went to the board this morning and told him I was retiring. I saved a life. A man can't be happy he's retiring around here. Not with you vultures trying to pick my bones. Gee, you stepping down? But I don't know when that'll be. Because at this point, I won't see any front runners. Excuse me. Gee, that's not true. She just needs to...
it, it should be someone who is not going nuts. You didn't think of maybe telling me this morning that you were planning to step down instead of sending me on this wild goose chase? For me more than anyone, but since you are not ready for the job, one of them's gonna have to do it for the next few years. Me? That's you in the chair eventually. That's who you are. But you're gonna have to get a new chair because you're short. <laughs> But someday you are going to be chief of surgery. I wasn't sending you home while I was chased. I was trying to get you in the habit of doing things without me. Damn. Yes. <sighs> He's really doing it. Mm. He's really retiring. One of us could be chief. No, it, you have no chance. <laughs> Dude, you have no so chance. Chief of surgery. That makes me vomit a little in my mouth. These are your letters of support for my free clinic. Sign them. Secrets in your silliness. But I want more. I need something to hold on to. I need a reason to believe that medicine can do more than stitch you up and, and send you away. I need to believe that medicine can not only save lives, but, but change lives. I need... I need... Sign the papers. Sign the papers. You still need funding. <laughs> Let's go. You can die on this. I can't do that. Why? Because you'll have to shun me. Don't worry about me. I'll be living it up here. Get curling iron and your cable TV, your entire DVD collection. I'll be okay here in the 21st century. <laughs> Can't shun you. You can. <laughs> They're just besties besties. I'll say hello to your parents. <laughs> I think they're basically sisters. I will tell your parents that I saw you, and you are well and happy, and have grown into a fine woman. <laughs> Richard, what are you doing here? These are for you. I'm happy. But when I told you I didn't have any more time to wait, I meant it. I know you did, which is why. Months ago, months ago, I said you are out of time with me. Adele. Is there a man in my house? But what did you expect? <laughs> Wow. I mean... I see it both ways. Just one last thing. Life is short, George. Life is short. And it sucks a lot of the time. The Danny Duquette Memorial Clinic. What? I have eight million dollars. Is he Stevens? What? What's a jerk? <laughs> Sometimes boyfriends can be jerks. It doesn't mean you stop talking. You get that I'm saying I'm sorry. Right. Okay, well this is how it works. You fight sometimes, and somebody apologizes. Well, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> You've never done this before. No, I've never. You can expect I'm going to show up. Even if I yell. Even if you yell. I'm always going to show up. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I feel like this episode really didn't do that much. You are going to make an excellent chief. We all think we're going to be great. I swear, I really believe what I did was right. I, I don't want you to forgive me. Frankly, and I... Finally. Try to patronize me if you did, because while I know I was right, you think I'm wrong. I'm talking. See? I'm talking first. You win. <laughs> Sometimes, the expected simply pales in comparison to the unexpected. There we go. What? I don't want to waste another minute. I can't have sex with you again, George, okay? I can't. I just... I... enough with the sex. And I laugh every time that I remember I'm never gonna talk to him again because it just sounds like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Can't believe it's real. It knocks my wind out, but it's true. I don't have to have sex with you. I'd be happy just to look at you from across the room. And even that, anything, any piece of you. I mean, hopefully, all of you, that'd be the best thing. Because I love you, George. What is going on? Mary? What the fuck? Will you marry me? Marry me, Christina. You gotta wonder why we cling to our expectations. Marry me. The expected's just the beginning. The unexpected is what changes our lives. Is someone about to say no? That was so... It was so out of nowhere! <laughs> Alright. Um... All right. <laughs> um, like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you have not already. I will see y'all.